uh, NCS2. Malbs has always been a player that regionally and even when he was back in South America uh, performed really, really well. And I think that we always thought he would be that really incredible performer at the pro league level or at the, the tier one level. And it feels like that's finally happening, which is really amazing. <laughs> We're jumping into the action here, guys. Enough waffling on our side. Ancient is getting underway between NRG and M80. Yeah, it's about time. And like we said, I mean, this is definitely going to be an interesting matchup because these guys haven't played each other in quite some time. And that was the old iteration of NRG2. So I'm really excited to see what energy you're going to be able to bring for this, right? Because I think now they've made some good adjustments. Daps is still here on the team, but he is coaching it where he was kind of the starting five, which I don't know how you felt about that, John, but I was like, okay, I guess we're, we're going to roll the dice and see what happens. But yeah. now things are kind of, you know, the stars are aligning a little bit more, which I, I'm happy to see here for, for, for an organization like NRG. No, I agree. Like, I, I was a little suspicious, not, not suspicious, but I was surprised with, uh, with Daps being picked as one of the roster players rather than being in a coaching or an analysis role. And now with him moving to a coaching role after a little bit of trials and tribulation in the early goings of the squad, it makes sense. It was the right call to me. Getting Walco was the right call. The only thing that surprised me, honestly, was that Fang was dropped in favor of Automatic. I thought that Fang deserved a little bit more of a chance to shine with a new IGL and see how he would work with Walco. But that was a while ago. Now I've seen what Automatic's doing and I totally understand the decision, right? He's been consistent. <laughs> He's been fantastic for this squad. So, you know, no doubts anymore in my mind. Yeah, none at all. And I mean, Rex is playing a really good angle right now, just going for the jump or just for the jiggle here for the pixel. A lot of noise coming through. The dualies are going to come out, but this flash might be a bit of a problem. Oh my goodness, they're all so blind, but NRG, we've been talking a lot about them. They're just already starting to get themselves into the site, going for a full fight. Look at that. Mobs just burns alive. This is becoming a bit of a problem. This is going to be USPs that are on a retake scenario. Not the most favorable. But it's still three on two. Energy looking in a decent position right now. But something looks a little bit different. Slox actually, he's going to go all the way around and he's got a bit of an inkling on something else. This is a bit awkward. Yeah, he's going around the world here. Maybe he's expecting them to rotate towards the B site. I'm not sure what the read is, or perhaps uh, they were hoping that Swisher could delay long enough for this bomb to be planted a little later. Instead, well, it's now ticking away. They don't have a kit. So it's going to be hard to get back into this site. And I imagine you're going to need a quick kill here to justify going all the way, and they're not going to get it. So probably no. going to go the way of NRG here. Swisher charging out, but he's got too many angles to clear. Walco gets it. NRG win the pistol. And this is actually something that MAD have struggled a little bit on, is their pistol rounds. Not winning them as consistently as I think they'd hope for. But uh, And right here, you're seeing it again. Yeah, and honestly, I think it comes down to, like, I like that Rec was playing that position. Again, it's a very standard thing to do. You just kind of, your shoulder peeking, you're going to have the smoke ready to go, essentially. But that's the problem, is when a team is pretty much committing to that A hit, all it takes is one flash to screw everything up, and that's what you saw, right? Like, his positioning was completely out in the open. He gets annihilated, and then it's a free sight. But like you said, I think there must have been a call where maybe it was a bit of a fake. And now, energy, they're not even going to hold on. They're just going to rush into this B site. They're not even going to wait. They don't want to mess around. They want to try to get things done. This. this is scary, though, John. This is very scary. Yeah, indeed. Automatic and Hex calm it down significantly in Slacks. It's going to get down to 55 HP. I think we have a disconnect here, by the way. I see two mobses, and that's not the case. I was a little confused. I'm like, they did get two kills, right? They did. Um, but someone disconnected. So probably going to have a tech pause after this. And I believe M80, being so far away from the bomb stage, is going to go for saves. Wreck could be dead to right. No, OC, OC, you got to get that fight. You got to win it with the Galil versus the 5-7. Wreck, uh, precision shots. He won't be able to upgrade to the Galil. He's probably too wary of someone else being there. But still a nice shot. And M80 will carry these pistols over into this next round. Looks like everyone has reconnected, though, I believe. So maybe we'll be okay and won't need that tech pause. Yeah, that would actually be nice. We'll wait and see. Energy, no. I, I honestly, I mean, a bit of a scrappy round, all things considered, but I'm still pretty happy with it. They're sending themselves at a 2-0. And I think the T side is going to be really interesting on how much they can actually bring to this map too, because like you said, I think the fact that M80 just can't seem to find themselves in these pistol rounds, it really starts to put them in, in such a deficit, right? And that's the thing that's, that's so annoying on the CT side because you're kind of playing the money game. You're trying to catch up. You're trying to get some momentum built. Where on the T side, it's a lot more forgiving. Yeah. No question. 
Well, M80 are going to be back onto the pistols again here as they're waiting for their first full-on buy-up in round number four. Mobs, what a... Oh my goodness, Whoa. what a shot! After he pops the smoke, he hits the head of automatic, and we got a 5v4 just like that. We know how good Mobs' Deagle can be, and while well, he's already showcasing it only three rounds in, Walco throwing the nade forward. That helps so much for M80. Obviously, they can't retrieve the gun again, which is a problem for them, but they've got the B stack going, and maybe that will deter NRG from going towards A. That's Mobs' mission right now, but it doesn't seem to be the case. In fact, uh, now they're headed even more aggressively towards the A site with the bomb right behind Breeze. Man, I just, I, I, I always get so excited with Mobs of the Deeg. I mean, <laughs> we, we, you and I have been able to cover it, and it's just insane. Well, not going to be the case here for him to find a, a secondary one, but at least he gets a little bit of info for something. And now the nades are coming through in the safe site. Oh, Wolk has got a perfect read on it. Look at that spam, and then actually the blood's going to give it away. So Rek, he can't do anything, but even now Slox has come to play a little bit with the Deeg. Uh -oh. It is blazing! But, okay, hang on. A little bit of retaliation coming back. Wolk has been a bit scary here with the spams, but it is the 2-2. Two and two. The USB to complement the CT side, but, oh, John, no way this is going to happen right now. <laughs> This what? is insane. The shadow's what? giving it away. Yeah. Oh, sin. Oh, he's going to swing wide. And they, oh, man, they just barely miss it. But OC survives with 51. And energy, you're going to keep this lead with a few zero. But man, oh, man, M80, they're making it close. Yeah, that's a, a very close round coming through there, honestly, for NRG. They only have one survivor, meaning their investment is going to have to be a lot more significant than they wanted to in an anti-eco situation. M80, on the other hand, they got all those frags. I mean, they're feeling pretty good. A little bit of momentum on their side. They still have to invest pretty heavily and don't have much money either. But they will have the op and the four M4s up and running here. Smoke's going to come out immediately. One for mid. It's thrown by NRG. Oh, Slacks. He likes to venture out into A main sometimes. But misses his shot and gets dinked right on back. That's through a wall, luckily for him. Because if it wasn't, he would already be on the ground. Man, I can't even believe he's surviving. He gets another second life at this too. But we'll take it. And I mean, that, look at the commitment on this okay slox is gonna get the full swing but he's fully blinded okay he does get punished but at least he can take one now wreck maybe something in assassination in the back lines finally now mobs comes alive here with the double leaving it just the two t's wreck wreck hello okay yeah he's finally gonna extinguish the smoke here a little bit but this is a problem situation right now for olsi and wolko they're just behind the smoke john and honestly their options are extremely limited and yeah. it's already becoming worse yeah, I mean, look, OC's the last one standing here. 4v1 spotted out over the top of the smoke and Wreck delivers the final frag. So M80, they get the guns out, they get the round victory. And as mentioned, because they were so effective in uh, their eco round against NRG, NRG won't have a buy up here. So they're going to probably just settle for some pistol upgrades and that's it. If yeah, that. And, yeah, and if that, honestly, yeah. Because, I mean, OC's got 37, probably doesn't want to spend anything at all right now just to get the op ready to go. And even now... Calling the timeout. I actually like this. I think this is a good opportunity just for them to kind of figure out what to do for the following round. This isn't going to be the round where they're going to like, okay, guys, let's do a complicated strat. This is what we're going to do. No, no, no. They're just going to do something basic here, but it's all about that that following one to see what they want to do. $9,000 spent though, which is kind of interesting. The AK is going to be on OC. He doesn't actually invest. Okay. So they're going to make me eat my own words, John. So uh, <laughs> they are going all in. All righty. See if it pans out for them. I can't really blame them. You know, at the beginning, you're kind of tempted to go for those four spies because you want to, like, try and counter everything that the other team has thrown at you. You just got kind of ecoed a little bit. I don't want to say full-on eco, but they, they only had one player left standing up against Pistols for MH. Just thinking, well, maybe we can do that and better, right? Three Tech Nines, the UMP, and the AK. The UMP's been coming out a lot more. I've been talking about it on many casts, but I'm curious to know your thoughts. Um, we hopefully have a few moments here on the UMP's resurgence in CS2. Ooh, yeah, we'll definitely come back to that. I'll definitely, uh, <laughs> I will, I will go on my podcast if I need to talk about it. But no, but it's, it is, it is cool to see in some degree. That's my, my Spark Notes version, to say the least. Yeah, no, it's, it's been more effective. I think Elijah has been running it a little bit, um, mm. and he's actually said it, it's quite accurate and it's just easy to control the spray. All you do is pull down a little bit, and it's pretty much a straight line. Anyway, we'll get back to what? that. And Malt is going to get a two K. Automatic Rex to strike for a couple, and that was a good shot from Hex. Rex a little bit under pressure here, and actually he falls as well. AK upgrade for automatic. He's only got one HP left, and there he goes. Swisher through the smoke connects on him. Walco likely going to be looking for that AK, or maybe just charges through with the UMP. Could catch him off guard. 
Not oh, a bad play, Waldo. Well, Sin's not looking. Waldo gets it. Swisher turns around and he will deliver the headshot. Second round picked up by M80. Yeah, and honestly, like, again, we going back to the very beginning of round five, I mean, we were talking about that investment. I mean, if they could have won that, that really could have just kiboshed the money situation for M80. Because even though they win this round, like, look at how much money they have to blow through. I mean, yeah, granted, they're getting the, the win win rounds here, but that could have been really detrimental to them. But the fact that it comes into a 1v1 like that, I mean, that's a huge round from NRG, just the fact they can find themselves four kills. They didn't get the bomb down, unfortunately, so this is going to be the, the lighter save, but I do like what we saw. And uh, one good piece of news as well for M80 is that Sin is finally in the United States. He arrived, uh, I think, last week, right? Right before the NA Revival Cup. He landed and was ready to go. I think he missed one match and stamina played and then won it. Anyway, we'll get back to that again. Man, they are playing really fast CCS right now. <laughs> Mobs and Swisher get a couple of quick frags and it is going to be a bomb plan here. That's all that RG really wanted out of this. Great work. Swisher gets an easy 3k. Make that a 4k at the end of it all. But uh, bomb planted, NRG's money will be a lot healthier and they'll get a proper buy up in this next round with probably full utility tied up three to three but like i was saying you know it's good for them to have sin finally in the united states he was playing on very high ping for quite some time he missed one match it did not make any difference at all because m80 were still able to pull off the win with stamina in the lineup and well now they don't have to worry about ping at all yeah that's gonna be huge and i just i think the fact that they're getting themselves ready for, you know, other big tournaments like Dallas and stuff coming up, right? For I am Dallas. I mean, that's going to be nice for him to finally be here ahead of time. They can get themselves some extra boot camping, kind of get used to playing together on the LAN environment. Definitely going to make a, a huge difference as well. So it's good to see him back. It's good to see him here in the States. And we're going to have to see what they're going to be able to do. But NRG taking a bit more faster approach, but kind of hut the brakes a little bit in mid, using the Lurk Smoke just to see what they can work with. But M80... You know, they use some really good smarts here, John, because again, they don't just go for a full swing, full commit on the fight. They put a lot of patience on this and they're kind of allowing this to control to come through. Mulbs should be communicating that Walco could potentially get through. And that Molly's a good indicator right there. That noise is there. Mulbs, oh my God, he's gone. <laughs> what a shot from Automatic. Slax also eats a nade down to 54. M80, as we expected, they have their hands full with this NRG squad. Slax though. Peeking around, Did the opportunity present itself. No, Swisher actually tries to take the fight. Slax is still there, misses the shot. Walk is aware of it. 4v3, still man advantage in NRG's favor. Sin is backing off into cave. There it is. Slax continues to fight with Walco. He'll win it. 3v3, but the bomb's planted at B. Yeah, it's not good. And even Sin just kind of going through cave. He has to win this fight. He's not going to be able to. So now the man advantage goes back here for NRG. And they're just posted up in the site. And, and this is a, a tough situation now for M80 because you can see Rex just kind of waiting things on Cheetah. And then just Slack's kind of playing very passive here, just getting exits. And this is the right call. They, they, they have no control of this. They have one kit. You just want to keep these rifles as much as you can. But I love that energy are just going quick. They're going quite fearless on these takes, right? I mean, they're not really hesitating at all. I feel like these rounds have been going by so quickly. Yeah, it's a lot faster than I expected energy to be playing, but uh, maybe they'll look at the demos and say, you know what, guys? We need to go very quick against this M80 roster and catch them a little bit off guard. Walco, as an IGL, actually likes to play things way slower. Like He's, he's not mm -hmm. someone that likes to go for those quick hits, and to see it this many times early on is, uh, well, like I said, I think they're reading the tea leaves, and they're trying to figure out what M80 are going to do. Yeah, definitely. And that, and that's the that was kind of what we were talking about on the desk, right? Is the fact that, you know, Wilco has been on the team for a few months now. I feel like the structures really changed, like the fundamentals have changed here for energy. And that's an exciting thing to see. And he's always been such a, a fun IGL to watch, right? Because he, he really does have some good, good insights on what he wants to do. And we're starting to see it now. Like he's definitely done some homework on how M80 play. And they're going again. Look at this right into the site. B site has been abused here by energy. G Hex gets the opener, not the second. Sin finds a trade, but Breeze is going to get Sin. So, man advantage again. Mob's trying to change that. Peering around from Cave, flashbang. He'll turn away from it. Should have the win against Breeze. He does. Walco, is he good for the trade? Uh, does the damage. Peering around this corner, putting the pressure on, and Mob's will fall. That leaves again Wreck and Slacks. 2v2. They're in position to go for the retake this time, though. Yeah, and even Rex creeping through. He's trying to look for this player on ramp. It might be a little bit of a problem. Actually, it's a swing here from OC. That might be a bit of a problem now. 
There's still a kid on him, so he should be able to go to the fuse if he wants to, but it's a matter of timing. The spam attempt's coming through, and oh my wow. goodness, and Slax gets the perfect lineup. A little bit of X-ray vision, and we got ourselves a tie game. Wow, that was beautiful. Slax, uh, not known for his rifling necessarily, supporting Wreck with the AK, and gets the spam right on the money. Picks up the op afterwards. Says, uh, just another day at the office, guys. I got you. <laughs> Tied up four to four. That would look like it was going NRG's way again. And to note, once more, we saw that aggressive hit into B, and M80 didn't really have anyone there. Yeah, I think they've really found a good, like you said, reading the tea leaves. I think they're doing a good job just figuring out, like, look, we can probably get these sites pretty easily. It's going to be the post plants that are going to obviously be the, the main difference here, the, the problem situation. And even their post plants have looked really good. That was one of the rounds where we finally get to see M80 showing us a little bit of that retake action. But now NRG kind of slowing things back down. It's actually M80 that are putting a lot more pressure here from Long B. Look at the boost up already. Swisher getting a ton of information. OC might get this timing. Oh my goodness, how do they miss each other? But I think they got to fall off on this, John. They really do. And OC, he's playing with fire right now. He's just trying to be a smoke criminal, but he finally just heals back a little bit. Peering out, good timing. Gets the opening frag in the round. That's what, 55 seconds in, just about. Yeah. Like that comes through. So he waited very patiently and found his opportunity. The thing is, again, M80 are leaving the B site free and clear for the taking. And I think this is kind of the way they like to run their setup. And NRG has realized it. And they continue to come here, knowing that they'll get bomb plants consistently. Oh, but Molly. that Molotov could delay them. Breeze does manage to find the trade on to Wreck. And then Hex takes the head off of Sin. Swisher, hoping for a response. Looking around. Mob is oh! doing the work. And he gets two. One through the wall. It's going back and forth here. Crazy action. We're sitting at a 2v2. HP advantage is in favor of M80. And they will use it to some some effect slacks gets the shot onto oc but hex even with his low hp gets one before slacks delivers the killing blow wow chaos here with m80 versus nrg but m80 secure another one look okay that's going to be the saving grace here like we said the player to watch was mobs that's a good key point right there the fact that he's able to find not even just the double but the fact that he's able to take the planter with the spam on the corner of the box like that that just opened the roundup entirely for M80, or M80 I yes. should say here, right? Like, that's insane. If they would have the bomb down, very different story. That's a, a really good point. I mean, such awareness for mobs, honestly, and knowing that spam angle as well, it's just fantastic work. Tenth round underway. This one's delivering as promised so far. Both teams trading blows. NRG. Three Deagles, the P250 and the Glock. It is an eco round for them. CM80 make a lot of noise on their eco round a little while ago. NRG are hoping to replicate that on their side. Mobs and Sin are getting super aggressive. You talked about the last round. They were pushing out here towards B double doors. This time, same story. All three players near that B site were looking around for some information. Didn't see anything, so they are falling back a little. But I don't think Sin wants to give up this lane control. Yeah, I don't blame him, though. I think th this is a good amount of real estate. So I actually really like this. Energy, like, with the limited, uh, you know, investment on this, I, I do think it's interesting that they're playing just all the way back in, like, T-side B main here. And now they're going to try to fly through the smoke. This is going to make worse for wear, but this is where Swisher has to be able to find multi-kills, but it's only one. Not the greatest situation, but oh. Sin. Oh, man, these deals are coming alive again, John. I don't like this. Plant? another plant unreal oh, they... they keep getting b-side plants here last ball is going to get one but breeze the trade finally he has dropped and that is going to do it for the round but energy have at least secured more money for themselves here with that bomb plant and they took down three m80 players I mean their economy is still not in the greatest of spots and we only have two rounds left in this half this is again like you know we this is such a scrappy game like we were saying like look like this is probably one of one of the most fun matchups we're gonna have in a long time with these two teams they haven't played each other in some time but man m80 like even though they're up six four it really does feel like they're kind of like like it's labored fights right they're trying so hard and, and it's been a bit of a struggle like the fact that energy can get the bomb down this many times on light investments like it does make me a little bit nervous and it's kind of giving away some free money We'll see what happens. Yeah, well, 
Automatic walks into a nade, but he gets perhaps an Malbs. advantage here, slipping through the smoke. Malbs actually goes past them, and he think he hears the footsteps. He's just waiting for the smoke to fade. He could be that snake in know. the grass here that strikes for a couple of frags. They don't know. Continues to wait. Oh, they don't know. Through, so I don't think Malbs is going to be aware of this. They're actually going back in towards A main. So the advantage Malbs had materialized for himself is actually gone. And he'll see what on earth just happened. I, I was sure I heard their footsteps. Oh, Maybe I he can he was still slip in. That. He can still slip in. He does. Gets the freebie on Walco, and that's a smart move, right? Don't that's force bomb. the issue too much. You get the opener and back off. Oh, and the it execute's coming through. Yes. And, oh, this is so bad. This is not good. And now you can see M80, they're trying to re-aggress on this. They, they probably had that information late. Like, wait, that's the bomb. Like, hang on a second, guys. We got to go back and fight for this. Now it's getting awkward. Now look at what energy are doing. They're kind of waiting things out. They're really expecting somebody else to be close onto this. So they now have to kind of re-clear T spawn even just to figure out, okay, do we really want to go B? But it does look like that is the plan of attack. Ooh. X now has some good control. Maybe one, maybe two. It will not, but at least it's a one and one. Yeah, the problem is energy a little late to the party here towards the B site. Hex was very far ahead of that bomb. And it gives Swisher a chance to pick up the op. Not something you're going to see Swisher do very often. Well, let's see if he can uh, pull off the shots as effective as Slacks can. For sure? No, no, he cannot. But it's okay. <laughs> Not his primary <laughs> weapon. I respect the effort. Well, I'm going to get planted again. I think energy has planted in almost every round here. Maul top lies out. Malbs continues to sing with that MP9. And he will eventually fall, but does damage to automatic on the fadeaway. Yeah, now it's just wreck, but again, no utility, but at least he's got this kit. An automatic takes took some big damage here, and now it's from Malbs hitting with the MP9 at a long range. So, I mean, this is somebody that's wounded. He might be able to find something if he wants to go for a spam. Bit of a fake defuse. Both players now swinging. Automatic. Gonna be the sacrificial lamb. Oh, this timing breeze is making a ton of noise, but no! Oh. Rec goes with a run and spree and can't connect the shot, and there it is. A fifth round game for Breeze. And will keep his life, too? <laughs> and picking up an off? Just... Barely by milliseconds keeps the op into this round. So yeah, I mean, great work from NRG again on that B site take M80 a little vulnerable at B and they've been abusing it round after round. Once more, we see some impressive attempts at the retake. That's one thing M80 have been really strong at is going for retakes. And honestly, it's a joy to watch when things kind of materialize in their favor. But right now, NRG proven they are up to the task go up against what is now considered one of the top NA teams in M80. Yeah, look at all the guns they have to go against too, right? I mean, Slox is the one player to kind of, you know, look out for on this one, but it's P250s, Deagles, just pistols, really, as much as they could spend on this last round of the, of the first half, and this is not a fun position to be in, though. But again, like energy are low on the util, but I mean, they definitely have the firepower in their in their pocket. And Walco kind of gives a little bit of a blip here with the Galil. Oh, but oh, okay, oh. Mobs. Oh, he's got the Deagle. Yeah, that's that's a problem too. Walco's got a beat on Mobs, and he will take care of business. Automatic sprays down wreck. It leaves only Slack. Does have the AWP. Goes for a spam shot. He ends up getting damaged and turning not set up and down, saying, you know what? It's okay. We had a good half. And NRG are pretty good. Walco. Waiting here. I don't see a path where Slax takes this round or even gets involved in it. It's not going to happen. Tied up 6-6 six to six as we head to the halftime break.
And we're back. Second half, M80 NRG all knotted up at six, and we go into the pistol round, which, like I mentioned before, has been a little difficult for M80. We'll see if they can exercise some of their demons here on their T side. And get it going up against an NRG squad that has performed as we expected here. Breeze in particular had some incredible moments. Hex too, and those are the two players that have in their stars. Here's OC though, who also has been very solid for them. I mean, it's hard to look down the list and find a bad player. Sin and Swisher come back with a couple though, and look at M80 in a man advantage situation. They try to isolate Walco, but he still manages to take down Slacks. Yeah, I don't know. He goes through a bit of a challenging fight, but now the CT pistols are starting to sing a little bit nicely. And Mulbs, I mean, again, he's on a one on two, and OC is the one player with the most HP. Mulbs needs to hit the shot. He's only got oh, two bullets, and he oh, does get the shot. Oh, no. Things have gone worse to wear, and Walco, he's the one player with two kills, but John, he's got two HP. You can breathe on the guy, and he's just going to go down. Yeah, that's honestly the best use of two bullets I've seen in a long, long time on the pistol round. Like, Mulbs just connecting on that last one. He's so confident, too, because a lot of times players go out and they say, man, I have two bullets. I have to reload. I have to find a way to do this. But he realizes the situation, and he gets the last as well. A 3K for him on the round. This is just how good Mulbs is lately. 19 and 9. It feels like there's nothing he can't do. Yeah, honestly, it's it's hard not to talk about him, right? You and I were kind of joking about it. We're like, yeah, okay, who, who's the guy we want to watch, right? Like, who's the player to look out for? And it's like, it's got to be Mulbs. Like, the guy yeah. just... He is on a tear. Like, he is absolutely on a tear. Like, he's 19 kills, like you said. The next closest is a Swisher with 12. And then no one else is even in double digits yet. So that's, like, that's insane. Yeah, he's really doing a good bit of the work here. Not to say that it always is like that, but Not oftentimes. Exactly. And it doesn't have to be. Just Mulps is that good right now. So you might as well ride the wave. Yeah, I'll ride it. Yeah. <laughs> I think any team would be happy to have this one. Automatic, though, up close. Gets one and breeze the trade. This is on the force by NRG. Once more, gain the man advantage. Nice start coming in. I mean, the fact that Automatic could at least get himself something go going a little bit. And I mean, again, the four on three, that does favor out nicely for NRG. But again, the weapons are going to be interesting. You got the double Julio with the Mac. And that's where the Glio can do really, really well. That close, you know, mid-range is, is scary, right? It's so quick of a, you know, rate of fire. Hex tries to get a little bit cheek with the Deeg. He can't seem to find anything. Now things are starting to crumble a little bit here. And even Swisher coming by with a little bit of a, a Mac-10 drive-by. And OC's just going to have to tuck tail, get out of this. And M80 will find themselves at 8th. But, I mean, a nice opening start from NRG. It was, it was looking like it could have gone a different way. Yeah, a good recovery there from M80. Slacks with the 2K. Really contributing. Ooh, see. Connects on the shot, but so does Wreck on that spray with the Galil. So both players kind of unnoticed. I think kind of agreed here and said, okay, let's both back off. And uh in Wreck's case saying, I'm gonna back off my teammates are. They're gonna pinch you in in a crossfire. <laughs> and Swisher <laughs> delivers the final frag of the round. Eight to six for M80, a little tougher than they probably hoped here on the antique. Eco, but they take or should say anti-force by but they take care of business and nrg will likely go for the full-on eco this time yeah and i'm going to be super interested on this too because again for nrg like on a map like this this is like a, a really good side for them like you know they still have about a 65.7 win percent win winning rate on the ct side so it's still quite high when you kind of talk about m80 like it's pretty dead even like their ct and, and t side right like it's 57 percent yeah. like so it's it's kind of something interesting but the nades are definitely not going to make it interesting here for uh for energy as they're just getting mopped up they're getting destroyed and uh yeah that's all she wrote for that round john that was a quick one yeah i think that was like what 16 seconds in that yeah, round not much give or take yeah <laughs> energy just pushed down mid and m80 is like okay bye nine to six in favor of m80 now we get the interesting ones though the guns are coming out for nrg four m4s the op 
on their side. M80 are in a bit of a bonus round themselves. So this is the chance for NRG to fight their way right back into this and get their first round of the second half. Let's see, uh, I mean, it's still a very decent buy for M80. It's just two Galils, not that limiting. And then the MAC-10. But there's Walco peeking around the corner, catching off Swisher. That's the 5v4. It, not that energy have struggled to get that man advantage. In fact, they've had it pretty much every single round so far. Mm -hmm. In the second half, I should say. Yeah, they definitely have. And now they're going to try to reswing for this DRAM control. Automatics just mocked him up here with a double, maybe a little bit more, but he's finally going to get removed with Mulbs just finding something with the Galil, but... This is really good map control coming in from energy. I like that they're re-aggressing on this. They didn't let that pressure off because now when you're on the T side, like this is the worst position you're in, right? Like you have a minute to work with you're in the back door of B main. This is not fun. This is not a good thing to do because now you have to refight for information. You have to get so much intel and you have to kind of go, do we really want to commit to this site? Because we only have under a minute left to decide. Yeah. 48 seconds now. They have two smokes and a flash. I feel like their thinking is to try and slip through cave and take a fight towards long B. Maybe use those smokes to isolate some angles, and that is exactly what they're going to try to do. 30 seconds left. M80 do have a lot of confidence, even in these uh, two-man down situations. I think the smoke's going to go here for short B. You have to imagine. Yeah. They want to try and get this plant down. There it is. So the smoke comes out. Walco's just going to spam it. They know the spam was coming. Hexed over at Long B. That's flashed out. They try to stick the plant. They're behind cover. Mob's protecting his teammate effectively. Mob's getting a second. It's down to a 2v2. Oh my goodness. You have another Mob's pop off round. Sin supporting Breeze is gone. You have got to be kidding me. Yeah, and now this is looking like NRG, like the fact that they look so good in this, and then Mulb just comes in and he just puts a triple kill on the board. This is becoming a situation where maybe he gets oh. something done, but maybe not. OC, he is one of the best offers, and there's a reason for it, and he comes alive with a clutch, the 1v2, and they get themselves a seventh round out of nowhere. Yeah, and he didn't have a kid either. They just had to delay him a little bit longer, and I mean, they would have had the round, but they got a little too antsy, a little too aggressive perhaps in that chase for him and were exposed in open positions unnecessarily, I would say. But I mean, look, OC had 19 HP. It was just a nice clutch being pulled off by him in the 1v2. Just when you thought Mobs was gonna create the heroics, right? And he actually did, honestly, he just couldn't close the door. So seventh round for NRG, even though it looked like M80 might have been on the path to victory with a 10th. I was just thinking about that line you said you know can't close the door and it's like the guy you know it, it sucks too because the worst feeling is he got a triple kill yeah he, got a, he did so much work and it's just the fact they couldn't close that out is even makes it even worse but even that it's going to be automatic coming in for a nice swing in mid takes them out they don't want him to have any sort of play time in this round 17 at all and doing a nice job just kind of again putting themselves in the man advantage really keeping m80 on a guessing game right now and again, now M or M80, they have to kind of refight for so much control once again. Like they're inside of Cheetah, they're kind of deciding do we want to commit to Cave. Might be a little bit sketchy, but this is where a lot of second guessing can happen. Twenty-five frags for Mops, plus thirteen kill to death differential. Yeah, I mean those are numbers you see at the end of a map, not when you still have multiple rounds left to play. <laughs> Jeez. He's well, a different level. Yeah, and he's a large reason why M80 have gotten to this lead right now. OC, he's trying to connect, and he does. Swisher, his next victim. That's two for NRG in this round so far. M80. Last time they were down two men, they made it down to a 1v1. Walco waiting patiently here in cave on the boost spot. Eventually will fall off of it. And M80 have really slowed this down, but they don't really have the time. No, they got to get moving. I mean, this is this is a not a good position. So now the the lineup's coming through. Rex going to probably get ready here for the short B smoke potentially. Does have a molly too, but are they calling it off? They might be. Yeah, I was just thinking that you took it right out of my mouth. I was like, look, like this is not looking nice. I mean, fourteen seconds remaining. Yeah, they're just gonna they're gonna concede defeat here. They're gonna let energy have this, and they want to keep the op and the double AK kind of in the pocket. Okay, well, Sin's going to be able to keep a little bit of himself alive here. Gets the op just back in this rotation, but 
Not bad, all things considered, but NRG, a, a magnificent round 17. Slax is lucky he didn't go down before time ended because oh. it was really close. Like we heard Counter Terrace win immediately before, right? Immediately, sorry, excuse me, I can't get the words out. Immediately after he died. Anyway, time I'm going to be called here by M80 to talk things over as NRG have a little mini win streak that they're putting together. Two in a row so far, looking to make it to three, a third, but uh, let's see what M80 are going to cook here. You got cooking. Yeah, and I think with Swisher having the Mac 10, again, like I'm, I'm curious if they want to kind of change the pace a little bit because what we saw a lot on the first half was NRG. They were just kind of, you know, holding W. They're just going into the B site or they would kind of just do a really quick execute into that A site. And just, again, the rounds felt like they were really, really quick, right? Like executes were happening like 25 seconds in, it almost felt like. Now I'm kind of wondering, does M80 pull the same thing? It's possible. They're sending four players right towards the B site at this point. Doesn't feel like they want to go for a slow take at all. They're already pushed out the double doors. Molotovs will force them to wait. Valko in. Jaguar and Slacks hits the shot all pretty much on the run. I think he just stopped for a moment and then got the quick scope onto Walco. Swisher along with Slacks. Moving their way into Jaguar and Cave, and you're right, Laz. They wanted to go a lot faster here, and there are two pairs of energy who are kind of shaking in their boots a little bit, thinking, when on earth are they going to come? We don't have cave control. Uh, they can pop up from anywhere, so they're split up in terms of their attention. It's a shadow. Hex gets his head taken off by Wreck, and now there's only one player left on the site. It's OC at 16 HP. He's going to try to open up space for himself, and hits a wicked shot onto Slacks and evades the trade for now. Will he evade it for long? No. Swisher is right there. The FAMAS spray is good. It's up to Automatic and Breeze to fend off this advance. Yeah, and Automatic has to make a play here. He has to do something a little bit different. Another smoke coming in, blocking off short. And Elbow now waiting things, and Automatic trying his best. He's the only player in the site. So again, you have to remember his teammates coming in for a massive flank as much as possible, but Automatic is trying everything he can to stay alive, getting some information. Wreck is going to have a free kill in the back of the head. And now it's all down to Breeze to do something big here. Sending himself a nine kills so far in this game. A full belt of utility with that kit. So, I mean, this is not a bad position. But again, John, you got to go against four different M80 players. And this is a position where you're just like, you know what? I think I'm out. I'm going to bounce. I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah, that's the right call for him. Unfortunately for, for him, I would say, because I, I think he really wanted to try and clutch this out. Especially considering, I mean, he doesn't know it, but Swisher and Wreck are pretty low. So... You know, there's a possibility he'd be able to at least get some frags on the board, but the AK saved over along with a full belt of util is far more critical. Oh my goodness, the M80 are pushing forward. Breeze might get overloaded. We'll see if they decide to go all the way in towards T-spawn. It looks like they're just going to sit out here for now. Maybe want to try and punish after time, even though that doesn't really matter because on CG side, but yeah, no. They're just going to be happy to keep their guns. Their money is going to stabilize. And, well, Breeze will also keep his AK and all of that util. One surprise, actually, for NRG, Laz, uh, at least for me, is that Breeze is looking like he's found his old form. He is so good lately. Yeah, honestly, I'm so glad you brought that up because when I was doing a lot of homework on this, I was like, man, Breeze has really come alive. Like, it looks like he's kind of found himself a little bit better, right? And and I was kind of going to ask you that later, and I forgot to, but it's like, am I really, like, seeing the right thing here? Because we talked a lot about him and some other players that just weren't really performing that well, but it's great to see him finally being back in a position where he's kind of getting to, you know, that vintage Breeze, and he's starting to frag out a bit. Yeah, I think uh, all of the XEG players have actually performed better since EG kind of just fell apart. It was just a vacuum they were in. It felt like it was sucking away all of their skill at some point. As Mobs <laughs> and Sin are going to get a nice couple here, but this is just anti eco frags. But yeah, no, I mean, um, Hexed is doing great. I think, uh, who else is it? The Automatic? I mean, since he left, he's looked great here on NRG. Walco as well. I think that whole kind of squad that Walco mm. was uh, was leading at the time kind of reformed here in NRG. At least three of the five. Now yeah, Sin I think it's going to get the headshot on Hex. Yep. It's three. Yeah, it's three out of the five, like from one group, and then it was like another. So it's it would, like when you look at their team yeah. profile, it's four EG players. <laughs> like you're just like exactly. Oh, okay, so it's EG plus OC. So we get it. But 
I, I like we talked about on the desk. I'm, I'm so happy that energy have made some adjustments here because that that first iteration, I was like, I don't know if I love this. Now I can, you know, this is an energy I can definitely be behind. And I mean, they put themselves in a very competitive game. This is an 11-8, but now this following round, this is going to be a big test, right? This is the full gun round. This is where everything is on on the table. Like you're going all in to see what's going to happen. Yeah, I think Breeze can get the op if he wants to, but no, he won't be dropping that for OC. He says, I want the full util OC. Do not get your AWP this round. <laughs> and Wildco uh, settles for a little bit less util, but overall, I, I think it's the right choice. You know, going for a pretty much a full belt of util on four of the five players. So you can slow down that T advance, mm -hmm. which, you know, we did see M80 ratchet up the pace. Yeah, you know, honestly, I, I feel like there's some maps where you can kind of get away with like less utility. And I think there's maps where you absolutely need it. And I think Ancient is definitely one of them on that CT side. Like you, you need that util just to slow things down, getting that control. So I definitely agree with you. I think keeping the, the 5M4s makes the most sense here. It would have been nice to have OC with an op, but again, that full belt to utility is going to be way more important in this, just so they, they either can have that B main control, like what they've been doing and smoking the door every single round, or even contesting for mid again, just so that they can make things a little bit more slow pace here for, MA, for M80. Yeah, and exactly as you just said, I mean, they're going to throw those Molotovs towards the bottom of mid and push M80 back for the time being. The smoke pop as well. Malco and Swisher are right next to each other, unbeknownst to them. Mobs goes out into mid, gets his 29th frag, and Swisher sets up the crossfire, does turn around, do, does damage to Walco, can't finish him off, but Slax will through the box. And now we have a 4v2 in favor of M80. Such great mid control. Mobs again just continues to be unbelievable. He's one away from 30 in a... I mean, in MR12, which is mm -hmm. so difficult to do. I cannot understate it. And we're seeing why he's so good, why he has these numbers. 1.31 rating over the last month and an impact rating of 1.61. He also has 34% of the team's opening frags. He's nuts. Uh, yeah, that's uh, probably the best way to put it. He is nuts. Yes. Like, and again, like, like you said, I'm so glad you brought that up, John, because I think for a lot of viewers are like, oh man, these guys don't ever stop talking about mobs. Oh, he's always about mobs. But it's like, no, like, look, it's a big deal. Like yes. when you're at 29 frags in an MR12, that's a huge achievement that like, that is a statement, man. Like that is some sick stats. And now these guys are sitting on map point when it was kind of looking a little bit, you know, rocky and a little bit gross and it was a, you know, an even half and all right, that's yeah. We'll see if he's going to be able to drop that 30. I mean, I, I kind of expect it, but again, what do we see from energy in this situation? I mean, I don't know. They're going to have to play a little more cautiously, at least in terms of the angles, because they have the three MP nines. So you got to play close angles as opposed to getting those long range advantages with the M4. I don't even know how they set this one up. It's, it's going to be difficult, that's for sure. We'll see. I mean, they can still push the MP9 down mid. Uh-oh, Breeze is spotted. Breeze is gone. Mobs gets his 30th right before he drops to dirt. So the 30 bomb, which a lot of people thought we wouldn't see as much in MR12. Well, at least Mobs has delivered it to us. Hex finds the trade onto Swisher. And now we have a 4v3 advantage in favor of NRG. But Slacks quickly erases that. Wreck, oh my goodness, he got caught really in a tough spot. In the meantime, though, his teammates have taken B, and this is very winnable for M80. Yeah, a bit of a risky move, but I like that attempt from Wreck. Again, he was trying to just cut off a rotate. He wanted to just keep energy guessing. Now energy are in an interesting position. Again, no kits, but they got that util. They got rifles now. They do have armor, so they don't have to worry about aim punch. They don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff, but they have to get moving, right? This is where they're going to have to go for the retakes. The nades, it's just raining. It's pouring utility right now. The smokes are going to block things off. M80, you have an AK and an op here to equip. Yeah, we find it. Oh, he got in, but Sin! Sin's going to be able to find the diffuser. That might be enough, maybe. Not enough bullets in the is. chamber, and that's going to be it! No way! No way do M80 find themselves in this position. I have no idea, but they're going to be able to pull that one out of the hat. And it's a 13-8 victory. M80, they've come in making an absolute statement in this game. Wow, that's unbelievable. Perfect lineup through the smoke. And this is just why they've been so good lately, guys. This is why we've touted them as a team that's starting to play on the level of complexity and is also one that belongs.